Hi everyone, I'm Mr. Fullerton and today we're going to talk about parallel circuits and parallel circuit analysis. Our objectives are going to be to solve parallel circuit problems using VERP tables just like we did for series circuits to calculate the equivalent resistance for resistors in a parallel configuration and to calculate the power used in parallel circuits. Now a parallel circuit has multiple current paths. That means the voltage is constant across the circuit elements that are in parallel. So an example of a parallel circuit might look something like this. We have a source of potential difference, a resistor, a closed loop to make a complete circuit, and maybe another resistor. And those two resistors are in parallel. Because the potential anywhere in a wire is the same, we know that the potential anywhere on this side of the resistors is the same everywhere there in red. And we can also do that on the other side there in green the potential must all be the same. So since you have the same potential on either side of the resistors, we must have the same potential drop across each resistor. So the circuit elements that are in parallel have a constant voltage or potential difference across them. Now, if we want to review Kirchhoff's laws quickly, Kirchhoff's current law states that the sum of all currents entering a circuit element is the same as the sum of all currents leaving that circuit element. And that was a consequence of the law of conservation of charge. Kirchhoff's voltage law, on the other hand, says that the sum of all potential drops around a closed loop must be zero. So these are going to be our main tools for solving circuits along, along with Ohm's law. When we talk about resistors in parallel, we can calculate an equivalent resistance for resistors in parallel, just like we did for resistors in series. If you remember, for resistors in series, we just added up the resistors. When we have resistors in parallel, however, it's a little bit more complicated. What we do is 1 over the equivalent resistance is equal to 1 over the resistance of resistor 1, plus 1 over the resistance of R2, plus 1 over R3, and so on and so on for however many resistors you might have. And a trick, if you only have two resistors in parallel, a cheater formula says that the equivalent resistance is R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2. That formula only works if you only have two resistors in parallel, but that may save you a little bit of work. It's also important to note that for resistors in parallel, the equivalent resistance is always going to be less than the smallest resistor. So if we have three 2,000 in parallel, we know the equivalent resistance must be less than 2,000 ohms. Let's see how we would do that. Since we have three resistors, we'll use the formula 1 over R equivalent is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Or when I substitute in with units, that's 1 over 2,000 ohms plus 1 over 2,000 ohms plus 1 over 2,000 ohms. So 1 over R equivalent, if I plug that right-hand side into my calculator, comes out to be 0 0.0015 1 over ohms. Therefore, R equivalent must be 1 over 0 0.0015 1 over ohms or 667 ohms. And we can check to make sure 667 is less than any of the individual resistors in that circuit. So we could replace those three parallel resistors of 2,000 ohms each with one 667 ohm resistor. Sample problem says three resistors, 4 ohms, 6 ohms, and 8 ohms, are connected in parallel in an electric circuit. Find the equivalent resistance of the circuit. Well, we'll use our formula 1 over R equivalent is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, which will be 1 over 4 ohms plus 1 over 6 ohms plus 1 over 8 ohms. Therefore, 1 over R equivalent is about 0.5417, 1 over ohms. R equivalent, then, must be 1 over 0.5417, 1 over ohms, which is equal to 1.85 ohms.
And to check our answer, 1.85 ohms is less than 4, 6, and 8 ohms. So that works. Now let's take a look at parallel circuit analysis. The way we solved this last time in series circuits was by making a VERP table. And we can do the same thing here for a parallel circuit. We have three resistors. Let's label them R1, R2, and R3. So we'll put these as our row headings. R1, R2, R3, and a row for total. Across the top, our column labels will be V, I, R, and P for potential difference in volts, current in amps, resistance in ohms, and power in watts. All right, finish up our table here and we'll fill in what we know already. Because our voltage source is 12 volts, we know the total potential difference must be 12. And we know R1, R2, and R3 are all 2,000 ohms. So, what else can we fill in? Well, we just found the equivalent resistance for the entire circuit was 667 ohms, so let's fill that in right there. And since we know two things in that total row, we can solve for the other two. Total current, I, we can find by Ohm's law, I equals V over R, or 12 volts, volts over 667 ohms, is about 0.018 amps. And while we're here, we can find the power dissipated as VI, 12 volts times 0.018 amps is 0.216 watts. Now as we look at this, since we know we have 12 volts across our circuit, anywhere in a wire we have the same potential. So if we've got 12 volts at the top of our battery, battery we must have 12 volts here, 12 volts there, and 12 volts there. And since the negative side of our battery is 12 volts lower than the positive side, we can call this 0, 0, and 0. We can also symbolize this by putting a ground sign there. That just tells you that anywhere on that wire is 0. That's our 0 reference point. The potential drop across R1, therefore, if we go from 12 to 0, must be 12. Likewise, R2 and R3. So you can see the potential drop, the potential difference, is the same across all the elements that are in parallel. Since we know two things in each row, we can calculate the others. I equals V over R again using Ohm's law, or 0 0.006 amps, 0 0.006, and 0 0.006. And we can calculate power too, 0 0.072, 0 0.072, and 0 0.072. Now as we're doing this, let's take note of a couple things here. The currents through each of the elements add up. That's because if our total current here is 0.018 amps, it splits, and here we have 0.006 amps coming through R1, we have 0.006 amps coming through R2, and we have 0.006 amps coming through R3. So they all split up, then come back and add together again to go back through the rest of your circuit. Kind of like a stream, imagine a river diverges into three separate streams. You have the current splitting up, but when it all comes back together later on downstream, you have the same amount of current later on. Powers also, you can note, add up. The power dissipated in R1, R2, and R3 add up to the total power dissipated, or 0.216 watts. Looking at a sample problem, we have a 15 ohm resistor, R1, and a 30 ohm resistor, R2, which are to be connected in parallel between points A and B in this circuit, which contains a 90 volt battery. First, it asks us to complete the diagram to show the two resistors connected in parallel between A and B. Well, to do that, let's draw our resistors in parallel. And we'll connect them between A and B. There's R1, there's R2. B, determine the potential difference across resistor R1. Well, right from our diagram, we can see that the potential difference across R1 has to be 90 volts because there's only one element in there and you have a 90 volt potential source. So that has to be 90 volts. And finally, calculate the current in resistor R1. Well, we know the potential drop across R1 and we know its resistance. So I1, the current through R1, 
must be V1 over R1, or 90 volts over 15 ohms, which will be 6 amps. And you could make a verb table to solve this problem as well, but that's a pretty simple verb table. So hopefully that gives you a, an idea of how we can use these concepts to solve a problem. Let's try another one. Draw a diagram of an operating circuit that includes a battery as a source of potential difference, two resistors in parallel with each other, and an ammeter that reads the total current in the circuit. All right, well, let's start with our battery. There's a battery, positive side on the longer edge, negative side. And we need to have an ammeter that reads the total current. So that'll be a circle with an A in it. And then we have two resistors in parallel with each other. There's one resistor. There's another resistor in parallel. We'll connect them back to the other side of the battery so that we have our closed loops. And there's our parallel circuit with an ammeter that measures the total current. It's taking a look at another one. We have a 3 ohm resistor, an unknown resistor R, and two ammeters, A1 and A2, that are connected with a 12 volt source. Ammeter A2 reads a current of 5 amps. We're asked to determine the equivalent resistance of the circuit, the current measured by ammeter A1, and the resistance of the unknown resistor R. This sounds like a verb table to me. Let's call this R1, and R, the unknown resistor, will be R2. So we've got R1, R2, and our total, and V, I, R, and P for our verb table. So we make our table here. We'll start by filling in what we already know. R1 is 3. R2 we don't know. We know our total voltage is 12 volts. And we also know the current through ammeter 2 is 5 amps. And because that's the total current going through the circuit, we know our total current must be 5 amps in our verb table. Since we know two things in that row, we can determine the other ones. R total equals V over I. So 12 volts over 5 amps is going to give us 2.4 ohms for our total resistance. And while we're here, we can calculate the power. Power equals VI, or 60 watts total. Well, now that we know this, we can start to figure out some other things. Since it's a parallel circuit, we know the potential drop across R1 must be 12 volts, so we can fill that in. And that must also be the potential drop across R2. The voltage drop, the potential difference, is the same across all the parallel elements. We can now find the current through R1. I equals V over R, or 12 over 3, will be 4 amps. That means that we must have, from our 5 amps, 4 amps going this way through R1. That leaves 1 amp to go through R2. So 1 amp must be our current through R2. And we can check 4 amps plus 1 amp equals 5 amps. In a parallel circuit, the current through each of the parallel elements must equal the total current. Our resistance, we can find a couple of ways. We could go through the R equivalent formula and solve for R2. Or the easy way, use Ohm's law, since we know V and I, R equals V over I. 12 over 1 is 12 ohms. And if we went through our calculations, we would see that 2.4 ohms is the equivalent resistance for a 3 ohm and a 12 ohm resistor. We can check and see our equivalent resistance is less than either of our two individual resistances. 2.4 is less than 3, so that works. And finally, let's finish out by filling out our power. V times I for R1 must be 48 watts, and 12 times 1 is 12. So 48 watts dissipated in R1, 12 in R2 for a total power dissipated of 60. Since we have that in our verb table, it's pretty easy now to go in and highlight our answers. Determine the equivalent resistance of the circuit. We did that, 2.4 ohms. Calculate the current measured by ammeter A1. A1 measures the current through R1, so that must be 4 amps. And calculate the resistance of the unknown resistor R. That's R2, or 12 ohms. Hopefully this will get you started on your analysis of parallel circuits. I'll include a couple uh, more additional problems using verb tables at the end of this uh, end of this problem. Good luck. If you need more help, check out aplusphysics.com.
Thanks and make it a great day.